Hello everyone. To what's become a sort of tradition recently where I attack the right wingers because I used to attack left wingers because the left were known as the crazy people in society that were upending culture and bringing about the new world order through the phony, you know, imposition of uh, oh, all these treaties, etc. that purport to be trade deals. So they were globalist treaties. And now we're not allowed to challenge them because that would be challenging the liberal world order. So if you challenge any of the liberal agenda, like the migrant uh, mass migration policy, you'll be criminalised, especially when they sign the migrant pact, which they're talking about being a pact, a migrant compact. It completely supersedes all your sovereignty in your country. It's complete treason. And so if Theresa May, who's already committed treason, signs this, she's committed more treason. But what does that matter? But why am I suddenly angry at the right-wing idiots again? Well, because they're all now saying that George H.W. Bush was a good president. Oh, yeah, because he's dead now, isn't it? So he's not as bad as Obama. Oh, he was good, wasn't he? Blah, blah, blah. Because all the cooks that don't understand anything about the agenda, they're just right-wing. They're just authoritarian. They're the people that would say, you shouldn't protest Macron. You should just accept the fuel prices, accept the globalism, accept the Islam and the endless mosques and so on. Don't protest, because if you're a protester, you're a leftist. And no one's saying that anyone needs to burn down cars, but to be honest, that country has been turned into a caliphate. France is no longer France. What's the point in salvaging it? I mean, Macron won't be driven from power if you just sit there and behave yourself. He'll only be driven from power if you, turn, if you burn your own house down, you burn your own town down. And that's what they're doing. They're prepared to burn their town down because they don't want to salvage a caliphate. I don't blame them. I don't want to live in a caliphate. I don't want to salvage a caliphate for the world either, so I think Russia should take charge of us. But for that, it would actually have to, you know, do something. It would actually have to involve getting rid of Theresa May, getting rid of the Tories, and actually progressing towards moving away from mass immigration. And if we sign this migrant pact, as I said, we're never going to be doing that. But back to George H.W. Bush, because he was the president. He was a terrible president, but, uh, you know, people seem to look at him with rose-tinted glasses because they don't know that he was the deep state minion. They don't know he was the original CIA man, pretty much the CIA's founder. And Daddy Bush, Prescott Bush, was the man that made Hitler popular from just being a soldier in the war to being a leader in World War II. He elevated Hitler, Bush's family. And then when, you know, H.W. Bush with the CIA, with the JFK assassination... Why is he around in all those, you know, and Richard Nixon as well. Richard Nixon and George H.W. Bush are always around in those early photographs of various presidencies and machinations behind the scenes. He was definitely involved in JFK's assassination. He was the man that said, we will, we'll, be, we'll build a new world order. He's known as Mr. New World Order. He's the one that says, it is a big idea, a new world order. And then when he talks to these old women about the Council on Foreign Relations, like, she, like they know what he's talking about. They just laugh with him. <laughs> I think I went to the council. They've, they've changed a bit now since my day. <laughs> you know. He just kind of, he did this thing where he shared with the public this joke that they're not in on. Because they're not globalists. And he was usurping and subverting everything about democratic processes and creating this new world order secretly in the background and publicly announcing it. But obviously not announcing its intentions. So no, I don't have any sympathy for George A.W. Bush. Just like I had no sympathy for John McCain. These people are traitors and they're dead and they don't deserve respect. You, des you give respect when someone earns it. Not when someone's done everything they can to throw it away. They deserve our disdain. They deserve us saying we're glad they're gone because there's more people <laughs> that we don't need to think about. There are more problem people in the deep state working to subvert Trump and the globalists from having their populist agenda, having our populist agenda and having any kind of humanity in the future, any kind of freedom, any kind of safety. There are those who are working against that and George Bush was the ringleader, George H.W. Bush. Now he's dead. And John McCain was also very important in the deep state, trying to stop Trump, trying to stop populism, and now he's dead. These deaths, John, <laughs> it's not John, David Rockefeller, Zbigniew Brzezinski, is Kissinger next? Is Soros next? These can only be good things, surely. Let's not have rose-tinted glasses and reappraise and reevaluate history based on this new version of what the media wants you to think, because it's plainly not true. Obviously, the media is going to be saying lies. That's what the media does. And so they're going to be lying about George H.W. Bush and saying he's a patriot and saying all the things that he's absolutely not. He is the deep state usurper. He is Mr. New World Order. He was instrumental in the assassination of JFK and now he's dead. And it's a good thing, not a bad thing.